Ben putmaya. So in hit list are there any videos which are videos I need to stop for? Yeah, we're going to freestyle. Cooker tops, those are three hit lists. Then it ends with an interview. Hello, hello. Good day and welcome to the Sport Rap Show. This is your host, Ashwin Berry, updating you on the latest news and views. Good day and welcome to the Sport Rap Show. This is your host Ashwin Berry updating you on the latest news in and beyond Namibian borders. Let's head straight to the hit list. We start off in the world of football as Brave Gladiators interim coach Paula Shipanga expressed satisfaction over the growth of the senior women's national team. The coach said he feels that most of the players have shown growth in terms of tactics and how he wants them to play. Namibia recently qualified to the next round of the Olympic qualifiers after beating Equatorial Guinea 2-0 <coughs> on aggregate. Sorry. Now, Namibia's senior national women's team interim coach, Paula Shipanga, will have to apply for the position in hopes to continue leading what he calls an improved team stalemate on Tuesday. The result meant that Namibia now have a date set with one of Africa's best teams, Morocco. The Moroccans will compete at this year's Women's World Cup as Africa's hopes rest on them. Shipanga is, however, not faced by Morocco's quality, instead remaining hopeful that Namibia will be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the North Africans. It also remains to be seen whether Shipanga will be the head coach when Namibia confronts Morocco. As things stand, the Namibia Football Association has advertised the position with the aim of appointing a permanent coach. Deb Marine Namibia Premiership Club Okahanja United FC has plans to keep 70% of its players for next season, club chairman Congo Hinjo has revealed. He also announced that the club will hold a series of meetings in a bid to prepare for the 2023-24 campaign. The first meeting will be between the executive before they meet with the supporters club to brief them on the way forward, he said. Okahanja United, however, remained skeptical about starting their pre-season before the Namibia Football Association announces the starting dates of the 2023-24 season. The club said starting early before the association and sponsors give them the green light could be costly. Okahanja United earned 43 points from the 30 matches they played, scoring 31 goals while conceding 30 and winning 11 matches. The club chairman is optimistic that they will be able to improve on that position for the coming season. Now, some Kuka Top supporters and members are demanding that the recent executive election be nullified. The elections that took place on Saturday are said to have been unfair. A faction accuses those in charge of using players playing in the Kavunda Soccer League to participate in the election. The group spokesperson, Hangura Paul Lasungula, said that they will follow Article 18 of the Namibian Constitution Administrative Justice to seek recourse. The group also rejected the club's financial reports. Namibia's Paralympics team returned today from the World Championships. Our reporter Brian Monango had this interview with Johannes Nambala. I'm Johannes. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out to talk to us today. First of all, congratulations on scooping your silver medal. Just talk to us about how the experience was so far. Oh, okay, no, the experience, uh, it's, uh, okay, let me say, yeah, so far, um, 
Okay, this is my fifth uh, world championship, which means I have experience uh, on this thing, you know. Yeah, and then, but the new guys that are, that are coming, and then it was just to show who is in the game and, and everyone, but it was a good experience. Yeah. How do you feel on uh, scooping second finish? Yes, okay, yeah, uh, to, uh, to win, to win, to win a, a, a silver medal, uh, I feel uh, proud because all the world champions that I, I, I attend so far, I didn't come with uh, any end of the but, but this one with one, uh, with, with one silver medal is the, is the lowest, but yeah, I'm happy with it. Mm -hmm. Is there any challenges that you experience perhaps, that's something that you can learn from for next time? Uh, no, the challenge that uh, is only the people that are like, yeah, it's only new guys that are, that are, that are coming in, but everything is so good. Thank you. Do you guys want to ask something? Speaking of wonderful moments, before we continue with Zoom In, Sportrap has a recap of a special interview with the legendary Brave Warriors player, Ricardo Manetti. Yes, good day, coach. Hi, hi, how are you? Um, fantastic, fantastic. It is great having you on the Sport Rap show. Um, the legendary Ricardo Manetti. Um, we're not talking about your coaching days today because... Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I know it has been... Uh, there has been always tough. been tough and a lot of controversies. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, as a legend of the Brave Warriors as well, I know you went on to coach it, but first you played for them, especially from the under... Um, um, the, the underage groups. Yeah. So, I just... But I don't want to dwell much on those age groups. I just want to dwell on your days with the Brave Warriors, um, the okay. senior team. And one of the moments uh, or things that I would like to know um, is what your first debut felt like, um, especially for the senior team. Terrible. Uh -huh. It was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I was... Um, firstly, it was a, a shock to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I think, 16 at that time, mm -hmm. playing in the first team. Yes. And uh, I think the nerves got the better of me. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even control the ball properly. I was shaking. <laughs> and to the extent where the crowd even booed me. Uh -huh. um, and, um, you know, it was, it was really a, a bad experience. Uh -huh. But also a very proud one, because at that moment I felt like there is something in me that the coaches, uh, you know, uh, see and uh, that they would want me to express uh -huh. um, so and I will never forget that game Independence Stadium uh -huh. against Zambia the mighty Zambia which year was that that was uh, I think 92 1992 way back, way oh, back. and years. you know there were players you know you the, the players of the previous era mm -hmm. um, your Mike Peterson um, uh, Tolly van Veek I think Tolly was the captain um, uh, Donkey Majid, uh, you know, guys like that um, yes. of the previous, and we were now the youngsters coming in, mm -hmm. and I was the youngster that yeah. uh, got introduced. So you spoke of the crowd. Um, look, we look at um, today's crowd that attends matches, yeah. but if you take us back to that day, was it a fully packed Independence it, it Stadium? It was. It was fully packed. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, you know, the Independence Stadium was the stadium to go to. People walked from mm -hmm. Karatura, mm -hmm. from Komasdal, mm -hmm. all the way to Independent Stadium. Okay. And, um, you know, they, they really loved the team mm -hmm. um, so much that they packed that, I think the stadium capacity is 20,000. Yes. So we had 20,000 most of the times when we, when we played. Okay, so you played, um, you played um, for, you played for quite a while and I'm sure you have had some special matches, but what would be the most special match you played in, as in the Definitely the Bafana one, we beat them. <laughs> <laughs> we actually beat them twice, yes. and, uh, um, but, but the first one was quite special. Mm -hmm. Because it was, uh, to me, it was, it was more than just Bafana, it was more than a derby. Mm -hmm. To me it was, you know, the South Africans, you know, the colonized Namibia, and we were like a province mm -hmm. um, at that time. And to actually got our independence in 1990 mm -hmm. was something. You know the political independence. Yeah, uh, that was that was something special. Mm -hmm. But then, f football wise, that was like for me in Most, football yeah. terms. That was my independence mm -hmm. uh, day. Yeah. You know, in terms of uh, of, 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 of being yeah. uh, Namibia, the brave warriors on your own, yeah. not under the umbrella of South Africa, not under the you know in the shadows of. Uh, 
other countries. Okay, I want to take you through a quick one. 1998, that's the 8th of February, Brave Warriors debuted at AFCON Burkina Faso against Ivory Coast. Yeah. Out of time, Ivory Coast 3, Namibia 0. <laughs> Goals, Eliphas Shivute, second half, that's Ricardo Manetti, one goal. The, matches, the match ended 4-3 in favor of Ivory Coast, but you guys put up a brave Do you remember that? Can you recall some of the moments? How can I forget that game? Uh -huh. that, that game, I think it was dubbed, you know, in the Afghan stats and records as the comeback mm -hmm. and one of the most exciting games mm -hmm. ever to have been played at at, Af uh, at uh, Afcon. Afcon. Yeah. So I think everything happened in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. You know, that was, I know, uh, you know, when you played Ivory Coast, the mighty Ivory Coast. Yes. Um, and we went into the dressing room and I think everything, the magic happened in the de dressing room. Yeah. And most of the times people don't, I think, somewhere, somehow, every fan would like to be that fly on the wall uh -huh. in a dressing room. Yes. Because a lot of things happen that there. <laughs> <laughs> the, coach the coach is on your is, case, uh, yeah. or the coach is not even saying anything, uh -huh. or sometimes it's just a player coming yeah. through. And and in that case, you know, we had a lot of fights yeah. in the in the in the dressing room. One of the things is that you guys went three goals. I mean, down. Yeah. Went beyond. Was this um, part of? something you guys expected in the match or were you guys caught by surprise and we were, what what we, we knew that? we knew the game was going to, going to be tough mm. but you know at that time we thought that we've matured to an ex, to, to the extent where uh, those four zeros and four ones are not it's, it's not going to happen again yeah. but then boom here it happened uh -huh. at afcon yeah. so when we got into the dressing room it was, you know, it was a dear Makar dressing room. <laughs> this one is blaming that yeah. one, that one is blaming the other one. And yeah. uh, it was this one having a go, this one. And the coaches were just there and they're trying to, uh, uh, you know, keep us together and not uh -huh. for us to lose hope. Because if you lose hope, yeah. the score is going to be 6 7 zero. Yeah. Because then you would just go downwards from there. From there. But, um, you know, some of us stood up and a, sp yeah. a guy like me, I stood up and I said, look, yeah. what happened, happened. And then There's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. So the referees, you know, is on his whistle yeah. telling us to come out. Oh, yes. And we are like fighting in there and having and a go with each other. Having a go with each other. And it's not going to help our, our cause. There are yeah. Namibians out there yeah. watching. Yeah. How are we going to come back? So okay. let, us, let us go into that pitch and do the opposite of what we did in first half. Okay. And then the referee, uh, and we need to go out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, before we conclude, um, uh, I brought that game because today is the 8th of February. Uh. And, and of course, it is uh, one of those days um, yeah. I would like to Special day. Special, Special day. Special day, yeah. Yes. Um, before we conclude, well, you just have probably 30 seconds <laughs> just, wow. to the, just to tell us um, what would you have changed um, as a player and what um, have you learned from being a football player? Wow, I've learned so many things from being a football player. The discipline, you know, time management, respect and how to bounce back from defeats. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've taken that into my, my daily life to say that if things are not going okay, you have to bounce back. Mm -hmm. Because after missing a penalty, after missing a chance, after losing a game, yeah. you have to bounce back. There's another game waiting for you. And that's the same with life. Mm -hmm. Life is like that. It's always an up and down it's a, uh, situation. And you always have to pick yourself up. No one is going to pick yourself up. Remember mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Life is a DIY project. You have to pick yourself up. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you. Always good talking to the true Namibian footballing legend. Stay with us as we zoom in after the break.
In today's Zoom In segment, we take a look at the big weekend matches. The Schoolman's group Vinduk Gymnasium Lions were crowned the Standard Bank NSSR Under-19 Super League champions last year after a 24-23 victory in the final. The Lions will again meet the 2022's unbeaten finalist, rather, Otterhouse Vinduk Afrikaans Preferred School at Gymnasium Field at 5 p.m. on Friday. Gymnasium's triumph in 2022 came through a last-minute penalty in front of the post, which fly half J.W. Fisaki calmly converted to overtake Afi's lead just before the final whistle. Fisaki will be absent tomorrow, touring in Tanzania with the Namibia junior cricket team on their quest for under-19 World Cup qualification. Now, Valdir Kotsa could be a very able replacement, though. Meanwhile, Afi's will be boosted by the return of Fanda Merva Tromp, who is at fly half, who sustained an injury during the under-18 academy week in Johannesburg and hence was rested for last week's Momentum Invitational Tournament at Vinduk High School. Then in the NSS our Super League is back in full swing after the holidays and Friday's clash sees two powerhouse teams that contributed significantly to this year's Namibia under-18 schools team. Both teams so far only played one game each and so it's all to play for in this single round competition. Vindic Gymnasium opened with a 31-17 away win against PSG Walvis Bay Private School while VAP beat Compact Tumeb Gymnasium 18-10. This, this blockbuster never disappointed to deliver on a physical contest, entertaining plot twists and unexpected new heroes emerging. Now Namibia Media Holdings production team NTV will certainly cover the match and you might recognize the commentator Spotify is up after the break. Now, Namibia is the only country outside of Europe that will take part in a competition by invitation from 21 to 30 July. This follows after Namibia's junior women won the world title in Argentina last year and the junior men finished fourth. There will be 45 teams from 14 countries competing for the gold medal in each division. The countries include Belgium, Czech Republic, Spain, Finland, France, Britain, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Poland, Slovakia, Sweden and Switzerland. Brian Sobol, the national coach, said the invitation is historic for Namibia and Africa. This is a big moment and everyone who has worked out all these years should be proud of what they have built. The teams going this year are excited and ready to take on the best in Europe and show what we can do. Now, Bernd Bojarat, the NIIHA president, thanked SPA. We are grateful to SPA for everything that they have done for us. SPA has committed to a three-year partnership with the National Inline Hockey Program. Now, let's once again visit the marketplace before we come back for Le Rugby Joe. Now, Wallabies backs Tom Wright and Rhys Hodge were axed on Thursday for Australia's two Bledsloe Cup tests against New Zealand as coach Eddie Jones looks to reinvigorate his flailing side. The pair paid the price for consecutive defeats to South Africa and Argentina, leaving the former England boss without a win since being parachuted into the job this year ahead of the World Cup. Loose forward Pete Samu was another high-profile casualty from a 34-man squad for tests in Melbourne on July 29, which doubled was as a rugby championship match and Junjin a week later. Big prop Taniela Tupu also returns after a successful comeback for Australia A in Tonga last weekend, as does back rower Langi Gleeson. 
All right, that was Le Rugby Joe. Next up, it will be Ari Hochart bringing us the latest international sport. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Let's go get rich from that dying old Is it that Dan used to say, if you're scared of dying, don't be afraid to live? No one's born bad. Like anything, it takes practice. What's all the commotion? It's a robbery across the street. What? I am Puss in Boots. What's a Puss in Boots? He is me. <laughs> Frank has built something truly special. What he's created out here, it's... It's a different way, a better way. What are we doing? Changing the world. It takes heart and all the soul. A head stuck in the game. It takes every bone in your body, all the blood in your veins and then more blood, and more sweat, more tears. All your hopes and your dreams, it takes conquering fears. It's late nights and weekends, six to sixes, nine to fives. It takes sacrifice and suffering every moment of our lives. It takes kick after kick, being kicked when you're down. It takes fighting for hours for inches of ground. It takes every last line out, every last second spent. It takes absolute devotion. It takes 100%. How do you find the perfect time? Is it in what we create? Or is perfection a form of art? Can we taste the perfect time? Move to it. Feel it. Or is it best enjoyed together? The perfect time is out there. Come with us to find it. Vintuk Draft. Perfect time. Perfect beer. How do you find the perfect time? Is it in what we create? Or is perfection a form of art? Can we taste the perfect time? Move to it. Feel it. Or is it best enjoyed together? The perfect time is out there. Come with us to find it. Vintage Draft. Perfect time. Perfect beer.
Good day everyone, time for international sports news and starting off with soccer news first. It is the Women's World Cup 2023 that started. Big result for New Zealand. They wanted the co-host together with Australia and it is New Zealand that beat Norway by one goal to nil. That game was played at Eden Park and it was almost 40, 43,000 people that watched the game and it was a surprise um, as uh, the previous 15 World Cup games, New Zealand didn't win any of their games in previous World Cups. So it was a big uh, surprise that they beat Norway, Norway by one goal to nil. It was Hannah Wilkinson that uh, scored the goal for New Zealand and uh, it was a great result uh, for the Kiwis in the beginning. That was in Group A. They also need to play against the Philippines and also against Switzerland. With Southern African interest, it is South Africa that only play their first game in Group G. That will be on Sunday. That is when they play against Sweden. They've got a tough group. They also need to play against Italy and Argentina in the 2023 Women's World Cup. On to cycling news and it is the Tour de France that continues. It will finish this weekend and a big statement made by the leader Jonas Vinegard. In fact, he was he comprehensively beat uh, his closest rival and that was uh, uh, Dajes Pogasa that was on stage 17. It was Jonas Vinegard that uh, finished about 5 minutes and 30 seconds ahead of Dajes Pogasa that was in the 17th stage and uh, now he leads by 7 minutes and 35 seconds over Pogasa. So it's Jonas Vinegard still in the yellow jersey and uh, it is a Bogasa second, 7 minutes 35 seconds behind him. And in third position it is Adam Yates, he's 10 minutes and 45 seconds behind Jonas Vinegard. So mainly if he stays on his bike probably he will be the winner in Paris over the weekend. Continuing international sports news with golf news, it is the British Open that started for men, that is in Britain, that is at the Royal Liverpool Golf Club and is one of the four majors of the year. Great performance by the amateur from South Africa, that is Christo Lambrecht. Um, he plays in his first uh, British Open. He qualified because he won the British Amateur a few weeks ago. He came in with a brilliant round of 66, that is five under par. And uh, it's uh, a good chance for him to make the cut uh, for the second round. Also a good start for Matthew Jordan, he's a member at Royal Liverpool, he is from England and he came in with a 69 to open his uh, scoring in the first round of the British Open. Some of the South Africans also teeing off uh, early on the first round is Brendan Grace. He came in with a 73, that is two over par. Not a good day for Charles Swartzel, he played 77, that is six over par. It is the 151st Open that is played, British Open that is played, and the final round will be played on Sunday. To close off rugby news, there's no rugby championship games this coming weekend, and uh, the Springboks play again, again next weekend, that's the 29th of July, they play in Johannesburg. And the news from the team is they got together again after a few days off their training in Pretoria. The last game for them in the rugby championship will be against Argentina at Ellis Park. News from the camp is that even Etzebet, he was captain against the Blacks. he was at home um, and that was uh, because his father passed away just before the test against the Blacks. so he had the week off but the news is that he will join the team again on Sunday. Still recovering from injuries is Sia Kulisi, he's still coming back from injury and also Andre Pollard, they will, won't be considered to play against Argentina. Uh, both of them expected to play one of the warm-up games that will be in August leading up to the Rugby World Cup in France that will start early in September. That's international sports news for today, hope you have a great sport day and we talk international sport again tomorrow. Goodbye.